The Sir President has also provided that look, when he hears where judges are living, people who are involved in trying criminals, people who are involved in controversial cases, they are rented buildings. We are going to put you on oath before Thank you go you. further. Thank you, Chair. Because all we want here is the truth and nothing but the truth. We are all Nigerians. We don't have any other country. If government has no business in government, why do we go through all the rigor, all the challenges we go through to elect a government? Hello, my great and wonderful people. We welcome you once again to our today's episode of this program. And today we get some videos and messages for our team. We're going to be so one quickly the review to you concerning the things we're going to be saying that happen right now for inside this country, Nigeria. Just as you rightly see some from the introduction of this very broadcast, when ABC would they receive recently from FCT minister, when ABC named Nayeso Wiki, when ABC it take commerce to review their own plans concerning the retirements of the Apico judges and also the Supreme Court judges and so many others. He comes uh, to review so many things when they they get for their own table as their own benefits when they say they want to reward these very people. He get the reason why they say we carry this message or this video come and to the one of Senator Adams Oshumole. I beg, I want you all to pay attention to this video. Although it will take us a little time, but we assure you say it worth the time. Just sit down and relax with us and equally not forget to help us like this video because the more you like this video, the more YouTube they recommend them to people. Now, their own policy now will be that very one. Thank you so much for your support. First of all, I will leave you to listen to the proposal of Tenebun, which is the president of this country, Nigeria, from the mouth of the FCT minister, Yeso Wiki, to the judges of AP Court and Supreme Court and so many others. We'll come back. For months. That you do an S legal year, not in September, September is tomorrow. Legal year in this division. Let me also say that Mr. President is not only concerned about building this alone. Mr. President has also provided that look, when he hears where judges are living, people who are involved in trying criminals, people who are involved in Controversial cases. There are rented buildings. Tomorrow, the money is not there to pay. And then the contractor will be embarrassed, the, the landlord will be embarrassing them. That is not what we should have. We should have a judiciary where they have their own houses so they will be comfortable and carry out their duties. What Mr. President has done, I want to say it to all of us that we should provide accommodation, ten for the Court of Appeal, ten for the Federal High Court, ten, no, twenty for the FCT Court. My Lord, if the DPP helps us on time, you lay the foundation of these 40 buildings for the Court of Appeal, for the FCT High Court, and the Federal uh, High Court before he retired. I will believe by August he will have laid the foundation. The president has also not stopped there. He has said, well, if so many times in the negative, that look, our judges, when they retire, they have no other job to do. Unlike medical doctors, unlike engineers, who, when they retire, can go back to their practice. And in this case, this is not available for the justices and judges. And Mr. President said, look, we have to start somewhere. And he has approved that the House of Court must have their retirement homes. Mr. President has approved the Chief Judge of the Federal High Court, the Chief Judge of the FCT, the President of the National Industrial Court, and the President of the Court of Appeal must have their retirement homes. And I want to assure you, by the grace of God, the foundation of these homes will be laid this August, and before that September, you all have your keys to your houses. Also, because of the request made by the Chief Judge of the City, who have said 
Now look, they need more court rooms for the magistrates, particularly in Matama, Asokoro, and Garoki districts, that they need more court rooms. All right, my great and wonderful people, I believe say all of them don't see the video by on self. Just as we talked earlier, say it get the reason why basically we carry this video come. The reason for this video not pass BC. She this book come as and I say they want to construct 40 houses for the judges of Api Court, Supreme Court, and so many other. Abi, now very good decision for them to make sure say they ease the pain of our fathers when they say they use their time to save this nation, right? Now, good decision. We not go against them. But this issue would have been better resolved. I wish during the time of these people's service, say they pay them, they reduce when it be say it fits or befits their own duty. Yes. I believe say if these judges were well paid, they will feel build houses for themselves. They will feel do investment for themselves. When it be say it will feel stand for the time of their retirement. These people not be handicapped. Now, because of say, they not manage them well, they not pay them, the dues going to be say, it due to them, to their own profession, by the same federal government of Nigeria. Now, it made these people become handicapped for their own retirement age. How long will continue like this? I believe they already talk, say, if you want to solve issue, solve them from the roots. If you not want, we will continue to build houses, for our aging judges, for their retirement age. May we begin now to delay plans for a very well salary for these people so that it will enable them to plan their lives for this very time. Because now the only way we will feel reduced criminals among these judges, now it be that very one. You know, if you use the finish to do your own bidding and at the end you will say you want computers for them, no be house will take care of their children. I believe say these people have more needs than this house when they say they debut for them right now. Abi, all right, I'm so talking concerning this matter. Maybe we will not waste much time. We will leave you to do the rest for the comment session, even as we take you down to this other video when they say they receive from this group of women when it be say that they scrutinize these people concerning society amount of Naira when it be say yes, they see the look for like where did they look for needle inside Sansan? We will come back for more. We are going to put you on oath before you, you go further. Thank you, Chair. Because all we want here is the truth and nothing but the truth. We are all Nigerians. We don't have any other country. The old man sitting beside you there, irrespective of his tribe, is your brother. And that's the way it should be. You know the answer and you refused to answer until the procurement officer answered. And you know the truth. He has confirmed it that everything they said is true. They have worked, they have delivered, and you have refused to pay them. And the monies for their payment has been allocated from the Accountant General's office. Where is their money? This is the question we are, ask, we are asking you. We are going to put you on oath before you go further. And anything you say that is not the truth henceforth will be held against you and it will be criminal. Thank you. Thank you very much, Chair. Chairs, pink, seven pink riders tricycle. Kekena Pep, that was distributed at the military barracks. Are you aware that this thing was not captured in the 2023 Appropriation Act? Who initiated the program and how was the fund sourced? Provide the committee with the procurement plans, award letters, bill of quantity, details of the contractor and evidence of payment. Avail the committee with the names, telephone, numbers and contact addresses of the beneficiaries thank you very much was expended and what are the projects it was expended on the committee is of the knowledge that supplies of equipment have been purchased for this office and delivered to the same abode and the contractor is yet to be paid and why so we want you to furnish us with the following information. One, the award letter in lieu of the 150 million, the bill of quantity for these supplies, and the details of the contractor in question.
minister as well, but the minister has written, we sent the letter to the platform, that she's going to Syria alone, and that she will be back. She didn't tell us when she'll be back, but I was told that she came back this morning. Even I just came back from Brazil, 26 hours flight. I came back this morning, around 8 a.m., and I'm here. So if you travel to Syria alone down there, and you came in today, and you are still not able to, to attend to the committee, well, it's fine. So they are not representing her. They are here in their own capacity to answer questions that has to do with the Ministry Affairs. Released for regarding misappropriation of overhead. Overhead funds released for November and December 2023 that amounts to about 1.5 billion naira. The funds were traced to some bureau, bureau exchange, and there were accusations and counter accusations regarding the beneficiary of the funds. Can you please explain to us the details of what happened exactly? Why the ministry was invited by the ICPC and the idea of the 1.5 billion naira accusation? Thank you. And uh, let me also begin by placing on record, uh, as some of uh, you have uh, graciously said, that I resumed in Ministry of Women Affairs February 2024. However, I have with me today directors that have, were in office when these expenditures were made or when these releases were made and how they were spent. The DFA is here, the procurement team is here, and as such we believe that we should be able to tackle some of these questions to the best of our ability. Uh, having said that, sir, uh, I will want to call on the DFA, Alloy, Mr. Alloy, if I can do, to answer the question that has just been raised, who was here then, and uh, of course, who uh, graciously has been leading the teams to ICPC. Mr. Alloy, please. It was one point something billion overhead for December and, Dece and uh, November. Uh, except if my ears uh, were playing tricks on me. Uh, that was what I had. And uh, that the ICPC invitation, which I led the team with the legal advisor, was not about that. Uh, it was about the transparency portal, whereby payments 5 million naira and above well, that went to uh, individual accounts were highlighted, and we held discussions with them, not investigation. Uh, at the end of the day, they told us to go. If they needed us, they would call us back. Uh, that was where we stopped. That's what I know about that one, except if I missed anything. The legal advisor is here to add more. Thank you. Okay, legal advisor. Another opportunity. Uh, Mr. Permanent Secretary, uh, these days or oh, early this year, there are so many petitions from the contractors, contractors for non-payment. I believe you are aware of this. This led to all this crisis uh, the ministry is facing. However, I need maybe to explain to the committee what was the actual release by the Office of the Accountant General of the Federation to the Ministry of Women Affairs. Please brief the committee also on the following percentage of funds released, utilized, and outstanding release. Based on committee's finding, Mr. Permanent Secretary, all capital projects were released with the exception of only one line, that is ERGP. 2021-95105 Nigeria for Women Project. That is total about only 10 million naira out of your capital project. 10 billion. 10 billion, sorry, 10 billion naira. 
So in this situation, Mustafa Manas Samtari, can you shed more light why this crisis affecting your ministry for non-payment of contracts to billions of naira? A lion was released, opened so many amount of money released to you. Thank you. 2023, according to the records before me, and uh, again, I will yield the floor to the DFA, but before I do that, in 2023, we had, uh, as a ministry, a total approved budget of 13.6 billion. Total releases were about 3.4 billion. 3.4 billion out of the 13.6 billion. <coughs> And that means we had total releases of just about 25% of what was due the ministry in capitals, I think. Uh, utilization stood at 3.4 billion, 3.419 billion. Percentage utilization, therefore, is at about 99.8%, 99.8% of what was released. The unreleased balance was about 10.2 billion. But like one of you have noted, uh, esteemed members, that was a single item under the Nigeria for Women project that was not released, about 10.2 uh, billion. So percentage of unrealized balance, therefore, uh, stands at 74.9%. And uh, on spent balance, from the 3.4 billion that was released, uh, as at today, though as we stand now, we cannot say that hasn't been spent, but it's just about 6.5 million Naira, which the relevant departments have actually put in to utilize uh, these funds. So yes, we had a budget of about 13.6, out of which only 3.4 was released. And the other, which was 10.2, was not released, but that was a single budget item. So the meaning that the rest of the budget items for the ministry were released. So that is where we stand. If I have answered your questions correctly on actual releases, percentage released, percentage utilized, uh, percentage outstanding, which was about 6 million there about, about two, three weeks ago, but which uh, some approvals have been made to that extent so that the relevant departments could utilize uh, what was left. So therefore, yes, I will agree with you that all capitals was released except for the 10, uh, for the 10 billion that was for the Nigerian for Women project. The DFA may want to shed more light on that. No, you have not finished answering. He said there are petitions yes. from contractors. Now you have like... The question about the overhead releases for November and December 2023 is what I will address first. Uh, I guess there must have been a mix-up in the figures quoted because from the appendix uh, 11, um, the appendix uh, 13 XIII we have, that's number 11 for year. Mention the page for easy identification. Page. That's under overhead. Sorry, I don't have the... Thank you. One, one second, ma'am. So... There's no page. Don't worry, just answer. All right, my great and wonderful people. Sorry, we just need to cut this video from here because of other videos we will still get for our table for the sake of time. All right, you do your own with us for the comment session, even as we take you down to this other one. We want to be so we receive from Senator Adams Oshomole. This my comments are to also speak concerning society issue. When it be say yes, it be very, very important for you to take notice of. I'll come back for more. There are better place to do the talking. All I've done in my life is fighting professors, <laughs> fighting managers, fighting politi political power, and fighting capital. 
So none of this qualify me, therefore, to give a lecture. But I did say that I am encouraged early in life never to feel intimidated by experts because the dictatorship of experts can be very, very dangerous, sometimes more dangerous than the dictatorship of military generals because they have the power to reframe the way you think and to make you feel inferior, even on issues where they are wrong, because you don't have the command of those jargons, the debate is closed and it's limited to a few of them alone. So I've learned early in life to interrogate. The more expert they think they are, the more I feel obliged to interrogate them. Uh, a stammerer should not be afraid of a debate. It might take him more time to pronounce a word, but eventually he will get there. <laughs> what has excited me is the way in which um, Professor Amadi I think he has summarized the issues, and I was very impressed by what I think is the, my takeaway from his presentation, namely that, you know, these Western ideas which our professors, our intellectuals are competing to revive and to assimilate and to popularize and to indoctrinate our yoga ones about a nation whose government is just there to regulate, and even at that minimum regulation, and that the private sector should be assigned with the responsibility of running the country, running the economy. And they tell us government has no business in business. Today, I was excited hearing Professor Amadi saying that is not exactly correct. If government has no business in government, why do we go through all the rigor, all the challenges we go through to elect a government? That is why in one of my interventions in the Senate, I said, I am not a believer in the classical school of Adam Smith that says government should not interfere we should trust the market, and that it is the invisible hand in society that will help to balance this out. And I said, if indeed there is such thing as a visible hand, why do we elect a president? Why do we elect a government? The market, by its nature, is not accountable, except to the buyer and the seller. But we elect governments that are accountable, that we should be held responsible for our collective well-being. And so when I heard him today say what he said, I said, then I'm not exactly crazy. So I am going to start my conversation, not a lecture, just a discussion the way we used to do under the village tree, you know, because my father was my great, he's the greatest teacher, and my mom, assistant teacher. Between the two, everything I have, they are responsible. I think that if we take a critical look at where we're coming from, Nigeria was at its best when I believe sensibly we submitted to what was then described as a mixed economy. It's not a completely capitalist economy, nor was it a combined economy. The government sensibly played a critical role to reconcile the greed of private enterprise with the primary purpose of government, which does not always co co coincide, which is the welfare of the people. That primary purpose of government is often undermined by the power of capital. And unless the state intervenes, you can't have stability. Now, let's just look at, for people of my age, and I'm quite, quite, quite a few of you are here, including the former IG, I used to call him Comrade IG of police, even though he arrested me, even by himself, by his agent and previous, and got me to take a couple of times, but he didn't kill me, as you can see I'm here, and we are friends. You know, for me, Nigeria was at its best when we formulated policy that were informed by the Nigerian condition and by the character of the Nigerian people. 
up until that needless debate about whether or not the Nigeria state should surrender and we should delegate the market to regulate our lives. The more debate about structural adjustment program. Before then, we were persuaded by the West that the market, not government, not bureaucracy, because Amadi was talking about respecting the public service. We were persuaded to accept that state is inherently inefficient, the state is hopelessly corrupt, and therefore we will do well to minimize and reduce regulation, smaller government, and assign more responsibility to the private sector. That is what informed the debate of whether or not IMF loan should be taken. Uh, or we shouldn't take it with all the conditionalities attached to it. And then we had the president who was extremely smart, a military president, who then got us busy debating. And at the, at the end of the day, Nigeria moved radically away from a mixed economy to one that expressly committed itself to small government and more space for the market. And so we deregulated the banking system. We devalued the currency. We were told Nigeria is underborrowed. And this is why I'm very suspicious of intellectuals. Nigeria is underborrowed. So we should go and borrow. So from a situation in which General Gawan said money was not the problem but how to spend it, we, we not only now finished spending what we earn, we started borrowing. And to encourage us to borrow more, economists tell us about how much you can borrow in relation to GDP. They'll always have some statistics as if this were in the holy documents. And so we borrow to a point that they now came back to say, you have overborrowed. And for us to support you, you must devalue your currency. You must float it. Does subsidize consumption. And when you, when you devalue your home, I mean, uh, goods and services produced at home will be cheaper. And therefore, you have greater export opportunities. Because Nigeria made goods, we find cheaper prices overseas. And uh, foreign goods will be too expensive for the natives to buy, since we are now in our native land. And because they can't buy, we will go to have a more realistic balance of trade. And that is how around 1978 or so, the Naira was devalued from where it was, one Naira to 1.5 US dollars. When I went to UK to pay my school fees in the UK, I got my check from, uh, I believe, uh, Barclays Bank which is now Union Bank. They issued me manager's check on the desk. I didn't have to lobby anybody. And I paid my school fees with that check. It was honored in the UK. And MBTS was working. With my waters of BTA, I got 920 pounds. British pounds steady. And thereafter, everything collapsed. And as we speak, from a situation in which one naira was 1.5, 1.4, $1 we now have 1,450 naira to the dollar. And that explains the crisis of poverty and all the other things that this current president now have to deal with. Because if we do not understand how we got here, we can't fix it. I work in a textile factory. And I'm very proud about that. Because it speaks to the whole issue of unity of our country, but also having leaders that are inward looking, that can think ahead of his people. The Premier of Northern Nigeria decided that, given the fact that cotton is produced in most part of Northern Nigeria, he reasoned and believed correctly that it does not make sense to export that cotton without value addition to Manchester in UK for, the, for, for, for this cotton to be processed to fabric and to be imported 
back to Nigeria without value addition. And so he set up Kaduna Textile Factory, which employed about 5,000 Nigerians, running 24-7, three ships, employing between four and 5,000 people. And I believe I all over responded by building a textile factory called I Ikeja Textiles. So we are in Ikeja in Lagos, because they were competing on the basis of what I call positive competition. And you will also have as a consequence, whether it's as the way of Barra, ensuring that there was a textile factory in Aba, integrated textile factory. And of course, in Midwest, we have one in Asaba, also producing. Then we have GCM in Onicha. Now, what went wrong? We were told at that time, Nigeria government, not democratic government, the military government decided that we must indigenize, give more opportunity to Nigerians, and Nigerians must take ownership. And in life, everybody take advantage of what you have. What Nigeria has always enjoyed that made us the giant of Africa is our numbers. And that number is even much more now. And I believe the Nigeria government at the time correctly told the world if you want to take advantage of Nigeria population, you want to produce goods for us from Manchester, from China, from Singapore, whatever, locate in Nigeria. And government prohibited the importation of fabrics into Nigeria. As a consequence, between Lagos, Kaduna State alone, we had about 24,000 workers working in textile factories because that is the only way they can contribute you know uh, to the clothing of nigerians in lagos in kano in bompai in port Harcourt, in aba in onicha these are places i went to our trouble fighting for decent wages everything was going fine and then these western intellectuals together with the Nigeria collaborators, persuaded our government that prohibition is unhelpful. And we joined the war, so-called World Trade Organization. And part of the rules was that we must remove prohibition. We must allow everything to be ported. Government should have no control. And so one after the other, all of us in this hall now, myself inclusive, however hard you try, you want to buy Nigeria-made fabric, you can't find it. So all of us here now, we are, we are wearing fabric that are made in different parts of the world, including Italy, that is no longer competitive in that business. The result, about 30,000 workers, textile workers in Kaduna lost their jobs. Their warehouses have become churches. In Ikeja and Lagos, a papa, Igomu, Isolo, over a hundred thousand people were working there. Even Dangote, before he shifted to the oil sector now, he bought over Ikeja textiles. And today, the textile industry is gone. Courtesy of free market. How can you subscribe to something that you cannot participate in? How can you have a free market where you only buy but you have nothing to sell? And the only thing we have to sell is crude. And that crude is not determined competitively. It is determined by some forces in the West whether the president of the US is sick or whether the the publish of data, it shows that economy is slowing down, that affects the price of oil, whether China is growing or China is slowing down, and all of that. And so the result is that today, we are importers of, from the lowest second-hand fabric to the most sophisticated suit anybody can wear. And I'm not looking at uh, our dress upon it.
All right, my great and wonderful people, I believe say yes, you don't take your time to listen to the details of this very message. Just as I talked from the beginning, say this video, it will take a long time, though a war time. All right, we're not wasting your time again. We'll leave you to do the rest of the comment session, even as we draw the line of this broadcast here. I believe you and I don't understand where we for missing. If I thought say one repair, we must go back to the root as we continue to the talk. Share your own opinion with us on the comment section, even as we draw the line here. We'll see you again when we see you. Remember, we love you all. Bye-bye.